Atlanta's mayor says she's ordering a series of reforms in the wake of Brooks's death, including requiring police to de-escalate situations. The changes come as there are new questions about what could and should have been done to spare Brooks's life. Here's CBS's Jeff Pegues. Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard explained his decision on whether to bring charges will come down to if the officers believed that even as he was running away, Rayshard Brooks posed a threat. Did you have to shoot him to save your life or to save somebody else's life at the time the shots were fired? Investigators have been closely examining the tape and say the critical moment is when the shots are fired. Should the officers have felt threatened by that taser? It's not a lethal weapon. It's a non-lethal weapon. Use of force cases aren't clear cut, even when there is video. But I've seen many, many uh, police involved use of force videos. And I haven't seen one yet that didn't look bad. Jason Johnson is the former deputy commissioner of the Baltimore City Police Department. Based on what you see in that tape, was use of force necessary? Was it necessary? Probably not necessary. However, the big caveat is that um, if, if he was able to use a taser, there's always a the potential he could incapacitate the officer. Howard says these types of cases further erode public trust. People from our community, my own son, they do not trust the police. Your own son? Doesn't trust the police. Uh, my son, who's 25, came and asked me. He said, uh, Daddy, are the police going to do something to me? A newly released disciplinary report shows that Officer Rolf fired his gun at least on two occasions prior to Friday night shooting. In fact, in one case in 2017, he was getting given a written reprimand. He also crashed his squad car on more than one occasion. A top union official for police officers tells me that in recent months he'd undergone about eight hours of de-escalation training. Nora. Jeff Begays, thank you.